So I made a video about 7 months ago on the most controversial e-girl. It was about a content creator called M.E.O.K. who had a very infamous past that not many people knew about, but boy oh boy was I wrong. About as wrong as the Americans thinking they could rule themselves over the British. Yeah guys, we were only going to give you 3% tax, how's that 30% now? But you know, Emmy's kind of cleared up her act, and I found an even worse e-girl, or perhaps the worst woman, to ever roam the dishevelled, noxious, treacherous plane that is the internet. And I'm not even being hyperbolic with this one. If we were ranking, my video on Emmy OK would be bronze, and this woman would be in grand master lobbies. And before I get into the most depraved actions she's done, actions when researching, I wanted to wipe my eyes with antibacterial wipes. Just a warning, these are some very devious and graphic actions they've done. So be warned going forward. And just for those of you out there that are hard of thinking and have a room temperature IQ equivalent to that of Antarctica, you cannot fix this girl. It would be like trying to soothe the hemorrhoid by wiping with sandpaper. Or if you're that brain dead, let me put it into gamer terms for you. It's like trying to break bedrock with a stick. But enough caveats and warnings, because none of you are going to listen to me as soon as you see this girl. But this girl's name is Isabella Janke, almost known as the girl who manipulated, endorsed, and allegedly convinced Chris Chan to sexually assault his dementia-ridden elderly mother. All in the name of trolling and a good laugh. Answer, but how is the sex? Uh, it was satisfactory. It took a while. It took a few tries to. It took a few tries, yeah. She is. She is older. Isabella Loretta Janke, born on the 18th of August 2001, is around 22 years old to this day. Daughter to a Navy SEAL turned data security entrepreneur, a pilot mother, and being a stepdaughter to a CIA criminal psychologist, who knew of such a prestigious background around her. That she would turn into essentially a Jeffrey Dahmer on the internet. With such events as boiling a hamster alive, letting fungal infections grow throughout her body, setting up cams to record her roommates without their knowledge or permission, and apparently grew an attraction to the smell of cat feces, death, and essentially wanting to sexually assault an animal with the big R word I can't say on YouTube. And her overall most infamous and prominent achievement encouraging Chris Chan to sexually assault his elderly mother, with their intended end goal being manipulating Chris Chan to end himself. Now after saying all of that, do you really think you can fix it? I think you'd need the Team Fortress 2 engineer and maybe an aerospace NASA engineer just to attempt to fix the faults in her cranium. Regardless, I was never going to do that and I was trying to put this guy uh, from the get-go when you said that, I was trying to think of a way to start leaking it in a way that I wouldn't get caught. Although her early life was pretty obscure, before she ever actually came in contact with Chris Chan, she was a degenerate not to be trifled with. And I'm going to get into the meat and cheese now, so it's going to be very distressing, very dark, and I'm just going to say sorry for bakakiing you with this information. Prior to these events, she was a computer engineering student at Texas Tech University, where she was known to harass and, in quotations, troll other students. This involved the scheme she was a part of, to record her roommate in compromising positions and then use said footage for blackmail and at the same time she was getting other students addicted to prescription meds. She also has an extracurricular activity, loved to waterboard her friends. Hands, sit on your hands, oh, sit good. on your hands, hurry! Oh, it's because Zijia has a certain shh, shh, like... What the fuck is this? This is bullshit! Or at least, attempt to do so and forcibly getting removed from some of their houses after taking her jokes too far. She also allegedly sexually assaulted a girl, something of which she also brags about, and in addition to that she also stalked a girl within her dorm. She also had a dog that apparently died of neglect. It was a stray dog she found and took in, and allegedly kept it in her closet, neglecting it to the point where it acquired multiple diseases, with talk of amputation of its paws due to its disease-ridden body and the dog was put down. But the water is very murky regarding that story, as the only evidence is an exchange of Discord messages. But what isn't murky is the amount of hamsters she had, having six to eight hamsters with most of them disappearing in weird ways. But at least one of them being known to die in a horrible way, which was being boiled alive, in which only an image can be found of the hamster lying in a pool of boiling water, relatively unresponsive. Also, within her Discord messages, there were references of eating some of the hamsters. But what's even darker is her how-to video on how to take care of a hamster. 
which is impossible to tell if it's satire, but it shows her loading a hamster into a sock and applying physical force when she slams it into objects around her room, with the conclusion of wrapping it around a ceiling fan to disorientate it if it even is alive or even is in the sock. Because obviously with her skewered psyche, it's hard to tell if this is an authentic video at all. So obviously, in the case it is real, I have to blare it. But the horrors do not end there with animals. Because she wouldn't stop at dogs and hamsters, she also had to harm cats. She would acquire a cat and overfeed it foul food, often rotten and well past expiry date, in an attempt to make its feces smell more. And then proudly show off the feces the cat would produce. Now this is just her reputation in college. An already sullied reputation without the import of Christian, who with her involvement would indirectly make her and her nightmarish misdeeds well known to even the public, and with an attempt to cover up everything would step on her own toes, and would lead to her being known as a psychopath and her university taking action against her. But that is later on. I, yeah, obviously, I'm never going to propose marriage to her at all because we're already daughter yeah, mother and daughter. You know, they say there's no there's no stronger bond than a mother and her daughter. Now, Isabella was a self-proclaimed edgelord and claims she is a lonely 4chan dweller in College for Computer Engineering and does not fit in well with the other bitchy gals around her and very much owns the fact she's a very dangerous, evil and maniacal person. And obviously things would not change with Christian, as she would find the perfect target that had a mental disability and was very susceptible to manipulation, something of which she was very skilled in. But who is Christian, and how did they and Isabella meet? Well, if you're not educated on Christian, I would say strap in, lube up, because this is going to be a very large and uncomfortable suppository, and don't worry, you can always close the video. But without further ado, Chris Chan or Christine Weston Chandler, born on the 24th of February 1982 and is currently the age of 42 years old, they are described as a vlogger and artist, with their most prominent creation being Sonichu, a mix between Sonic and Pikachu, and would be one of the main characters alongside themselves in the Sonichu comics, most of which drawn by Chris Chan and most definitely was an unhealthy addiction for them, as their life revolved around this fictional character, even to the point where they would advocate that the fictional character and fictional world were real, so much so they would create their own medallion of the character and wear it around their neck almost daily, which was synonymous and stereotypical for the Chris Chan attire, and it got to the point where he'd start creating pornographic illustrations of himself with Sonichu or with people he knew, one of these people being Megan Schroeder, who Chris Chan very much took an interest in, as they were on a self-proclaimed quest to find love and a girlfriend, something they would update constantly about and talk about in their videos. This catalogue of videos being skits, talking about Sonichu, their comics, and general life updates among other things. They also had a history of posting on forums about the same topics. These comics, forum posts and videos would later be found by trolls, leading to Chris Chan becoming one of the first lol cows. People figuratively milked for laughs, as most of the time they are not self-aware to the fact that their own behaviour and actions are the cause for people making fun of them. Chris Chan was well documented as a lol cow, on the forum page Kiwi Farms, where the list of lol cows are still being added to to this day. Although Chris Chan was very naive to the fact people were making fun of him, he would try to get back at the trolls by either shouting at the camera <coughs> or creating a timeline where he actually has a good ending and he was trolling the trolls all along. Well, the uh, truth comes out. I've never been autistic. I work 40 hours a week to support my parents. This has all been a trick. You have been trolled. But unfortunately, the good ending never came. And as always, things would get worse upon the introduction of Bella into their life. During 2020, she got in contact with Chris after initial interest in his character from the videos and documentaries made about him and the fact that she previously unknowingly came in contact with them in 2016 at a Rubik's convention. It was said that she had to go through a long list of contacts just to open a line of communication with Chris. 
Now, her early conversations with Chris aren't documented, and her motive used to get in contact with Chris isn't known as well. But one can assume in order to gain rapport, and to somewhat befriend Chris, she would offer her services, and in November of 2020 would upload an animation for Chris Chan being an intro for Sonny Chu. <laughs> Now, it's unknown if this is the wedge in the door she needed in order to get close to Chris Chan, but it definitely helped. As the two of them would start communicating quite often, and she would even brag, essentially, that it was quite easy to talk to them, as essentially all they had to do was get people to launch a barrage of hate at them, and then from the result of this, just console them with an added financial benefit. That quite literally is the most ludicrous and complicated GTA money glitch I've ever seen. But these two grew quite close with her wishing them a happy birthday. Hi Chris, it's Bella. Um, happy 21st, hope you enjoy yourself. Bye. Albeit with a sense of reluctancy, you can quite literally see the disgust on her face. Now as said before, Chris Chan was struggling with getting a girlfriend. Some of you can definitely relate, but they also were discovering their gender identity and would come to the conclusion they wanted to be female. And instead of Chris go under Christine, something of which Isabella supposedly supported and supported their attempts to find love. Obviously with their own malicious intentions. This involved a scenario of one of Chris Chan's fans, who was so infatuated with Chris Chan, they wanted to do the deed with Chris Chan and Isabella would foster this interaction. This fan's name was Fiona and they were also autistic. And there was a plan set in place where the two would meet at a brony convention and it would be a one-time thing. Isabella would receive compensation for setting this up, and also become Chris Chan's cameraman, even receive a camera she didn't have to pay for. But obviously, outside of the financial benefit, she had her own goals in this situation. The main goal being to steal Fiona from Chris Chan. As in her own words, she was simping for her, and then also states she simps for any girl. Keep in mind, this girl has allegedly sexually assaulted a girl and stalked another. But Fiona is an integral part to the story, as she was the original person to expose the call and used as a scapegoat. However, as fortunate as it was, Chris Chan and Fiona's meeting would never happen, because the event was organised for August 13th, 2021, and Chris Chan was arrested 12 days prior. Because as I said, Bella had an influence in his love life, and the two had got so close that Chris Chan was divulging confidential information to her. Such information involved that Chris had found a new lover that was around 70 years old, and then Chris would later divulge that the 70 year old was their mother. A woman that was elderly and going through dementia, and most probably was not in the right of mind to consent to the actions that Chris Chan was performing. Now it's unsure if Isabella actually directed Chris Chan to perform these acts, but she was very complacent to the fact that it was ongoing, and was even encouraging and supporting these actions, evidently through the voice calls leaked. God said this is okay? Yeah, then you don't really have anything to worry about if God himself said this is fine. But how did this happen? How did this come about? I encouraged her positively, let her make the first move. She wanted to do it. Oh, she did? Really? She made the first move? Oh, oh really? Wow, Barbara. <laughs> and said voice calls before they were leaked were archived months before the arrest of Chris Chan, meaning that Isabella was sitting on a pile of evidence whilst Chris Chan was still sexually assaulting his elderly mother. So her innocence regarding this situation is very much out the window. And her motive for sitting on this evidence was to use it as blackmail to eventually get Chris Chan to potentially take their own life. And that was the intended goal all along. As with doing so, they would become the biggest troll the internet has ever seen, something they deeply desired. And in a twist of fate, her wish would become true, just not in the way she intended, because she had given a recording of the call to Fiona, the person infatuated with Chris Chan, and a person in her own words she was simping for. Now looking at this situation, potentially the only reason Bella would supply such evidence to Fiona would be so Fiona would lose attraction to Chris Chan and thus Bella's plan of stealing Fiona from Chris Chan would be complete. But she didn't have the foresight to know, Fiona would become so disgusted with this event, to the point where she'd have no appetite for a week, and her infatuation with Chris Chan would turn to absolute disgust, to the point where she would leak the evidence to other people, who then put said evidence in front of the public eye, thus unintentionally starting something on the internet, 
akin to that of a wildfire. Like I'm talking kerosene in a dry oak forest, with how much of a blaze this started. Multiple versions of the call were released, some of the sections of Bella talking cut out, but eventually the full call of Christian and Bella talking would make it to the public domain, and the entire world would share Fiona's disgust. Every corner of the internet had heard it, mainstream media was reporting on it, even Tucker Carlson was reporting on it and eventually it would lead to Chris Chan's arrest on the 1st of August 2021 at a motel, with the charges being incest. Now, everyone pretty much assumed this was the end of Chris Chan, but with Chris Chan gone, one question still remained. Who is the other person in the call, and why were they so calm about it? This led to people turning their attention towards the female voice, trying to unearth the identity of said person and their involvement. Especially people on the Kiwi forms were very curious to know who this person was, and dig they did where they found a picture of Bella in Chris and Hare's direct messages, along with her name. And Bella would panic and attempt to do damage control, even though previously she was gloating that she broke the internet and that she was the greatest troll. Now she was attempting to cover up any trace of her and her involvement. Friends would assist in this, but only made it significantly worse. One trying to divert the attention and leak more information about Chris Chan and the event, but this just incriminated her more. Another tried to photoshop message interactions with Chris Chan, which were almost immediately debunked by a photo forensic. And at this point, Bella being the mastermind and supposedly the most manipulative and biggest troll to date in her own words, and in her infinite wisdom, would start to make mistakes. The first one performing an interview with a friend of Fiona's, possibly attempting to try and manipulate the malleable evidence in her favour so she could go scot-free. But although she supposedly had an aptitude towards manipulation, this so-called interview did not go her way at all. Throughout the call she's very panicky and hesitant, almost spewing excuses left, right and centre, and when questioned about certain things that happened in that call, she gets extremely angry. Actual genuine, that's me genuinely saying I really hope you do this. With the kind of, with the kind of people, him, with that, the, that, that tells you that I'm interested in incest? For fuck's sake, dude. With the kind of people who, who have associated with Chris in the past, anything is possible. And you should know this. What? Why is that the only fucking question you're asking? What he's asking, I mean. Why is that the only question that you're asking continuously? I told you, I'm not because, obsessed. I got the, because I said that, he started talking more. I wanted to figure out if he's going to do it more, if he's going to continuously do it. I'm reflecting what he's telling me. I'm repeating it back to him, so you're going to do it more before the convention. I'm reflecting what he's trying to tell me. And plus, what you said verbatim isn't even what I said. I'm trying to reflect on what he's telling me so I could get more information of him. That's what The overall conclusion of the call just leading people to question her character further and incriminate herself further. Now at this point, quite literally, Bella was shitting bricks. Her house of cards was falling and manipulation wasn't working anymore, and presumably under pressure, decided to go completely nuclear. This involved doxing and throwing all her other friends under the bus. People who knew and cooperated with the entire situation with Chris Chan, and even shared the enjoyment and the end goal of having him end himself. These so-called friends were just as bad as Bella, which made perfect sense why Bella would try to throw them under the bus. But for some reason, she did not think ahead, or even have the foresight to predict, they all had evidence against her, and would share all the things such as Discord messages they could, exposing Bella as the ringleader of the whole situation. And this involved her motive and her plan to make Chris Chan end himself. Now as the news broke, Bella had nowhere to hide. The evidence was quite literally stacked up against her, and her overall damage control failed miserably. However, not only was her online reputation and name sullied, her academic prospects were about to be ruined as well, as people began contacting the Texas University with all the evidence and even fellow students. This led to the campus doing an investigation, which came out basically saying she did all this stuff online, not on campus, we really can't do anything about this. And the emails from outside the university continued, overwhelming the university to the point where they did a second investigation. But a few months before that, Bella was arrested anyway, for nothing to do with anything online she did, or any of the sick and twisted things she did in person. Instead, it was because she had a taser. 
where there's one video where you can see her tasing herself. Now if you've watched any other videos on Isabella Jenke, you're probably getting a sense of deja vu in that small brain of yours, as most of the things I've said most people know anyway, and the context given in this video is almost verbatim to any other video talking about this topic. But I'm not like other gals. Put your tinfoil hat on and come with me. Because the story doesn't end there, it just becomes very skewered. Now if you don't know, Chris Chan was released in March of 2023, in which they promptly continued their online career, albeit not without criticism. And it's unknown if he feels guilt or remorse for what he did. Even when it's brought up in their chat or their donations on stream, they sort of just shut down or ignore it completely. Hey, hey, hey. If... Da, da, da. One heart piece. However, whilst they were in jail, they would be very vocal about the topic of Fiona and Bella, sending out multiple handwritten letters to people, many of which somewhat delusional, but one to be highlighted is the 8th of November 2021 letter, as it essentially says they hold distaste for Bella, with some psychotic ramblings about how it was all a test and they passed, but everyone else failed. So Christian, who obviously doesn't want to talk about this situation much, holds a very negative opinion of Bella, but what actually happened to Bella? Well, it is very much muddy water, as people are suggesting her father, who has a business in data security, in the cyber security field, and supposedly with many connections, has had a hand at suppressing some of the information regarding Bella. However, with his best efforts, Bella just could not help herself. She attempted to start another Instagram page under the name of Maxin Sidero. However, people found out pretty quick this was them and she removed it, but if you search Isabella Jenke to this day, chances are it will come up with a dentist or a real estate agent, which are alleged efforts of her father trying to clear her name on the internet. Now going back to the second investigation of the university, the overall ruling was that she would be suspended for two years, of which of 2024 is probably over by now and she may be attending. But overall, after the situation, Bella hasn't been interacting with the internet much, as her name and face are tied to a heinous crime they collaborated in. If you want to follow the story, somebody called Swallow Down on YouTube makes a YouTube video every time there is an update with Isabella Jenke and did help me make this video with the additional information. But in conclusion, Isabella Jenke will go down as one of the worst people on the internet, a title gained even without the interaction with Chris Chan, as I only talked about the surface layer level of the things she's done. Some additional actions include conducting experiments on her friend, by introducing estrogen into their food and drink, obviously without their knowledge. But this is a terrible person, who was very manipulative, a psychopath, and seemingly held no compassion for anyone. Once again, thank you to Swallow Down and John Swan, as their videos did help with this video, and go more into depth into the subject, but also the commendable effort of the users of Kiwi Farms for digging and finding the identity of the other voice within the call. But once again, if you're still thinking throughout this whole video you can fix this gal, please go see a mental health specialist, because there is something seriously wrong with you. And that's coming from a British resident, who can't even make the like and subscribe button light up with their voice because of their abhorrent accent. But anyway, bye bye